First of all, why the slides are being shown, I would like to thank you, Sojay, for the invitation. And uh, I would like to thank you all the uh, colleagues, panelists, for their uh, really interesting uh, uh, lectures. The first answer could be why a lawyer is needed among the distinguished panelists. Uh, a first answer could be that a lawyer may be always useful, but the real one is that I have been called to address some uh, uh, remarks about legal uh, aspects, which in my opinion uh, it's not discussed enough uh, in their real importance. For example, my colleagues panelists, um, I don't know if they are aware, uh, have discussed uh, uh, technical slides, uh, but with a legal heart inside. Because, for example, uh, uh, the Italian Space Agency has discussed about integrity, about data accuracy, which may turn into source of legal liability when I add the, the term lack of accuracy or lack of uh, integrity. Uh, and, and this could be a source of legal liability. Or, for example, uh, Engineer Lisi has presented to us uh, a slides with the architecture of the GNSS system. Uh, the architecture uh, show has uh, various technical level, and in each level there is a level of legal liability. And just to start from the example of Mr. Uh, of Engineer Lisi, the French train coming uh, from Paris to Moscow. Uh, let's say, to be practical, that while the train is in Germany, in the middle of the journey, a, a crash occurs for a failure or for a malfunctioning of the GNSS system uh, providing the signals. Who is liable? Uh, first of all, which kind of jurisdiction and which kind of law may be applied to the legal action brought to uh, compensation for damages? The French one, because the uh, railway company provides the ticket transportation contract. Uh, the Germany one, because uh, it's the place where the damage has occurred or uh, the Russian one because uh, there is a problem with the interoperability future because it does not exist between uh, uh, Galileo and uh, GLONASS and uh, who can uh, be uh, sued? The signal provider, uh, the obviously yes uh, in a certain limit but we will see after. Uh, who can uh, uh, brought the legal action before which court? Uh, the end user is, in this case, the railway company, which may uh, the, the subject suing the signal provider. But the uh, consumer, the real end user suffering for damages, may sue only the company, the railway company, or also the provider of the signal. Is there a public liability in providing the signal? For example, the European Union, as it's written in the regulation of December 2013, is the owner of the infrastructure. So as owner and a, a, as holder of the IPR, intellectual property right on the rule system, is also the liable subject. We will see that the public subject will deny liability in such case. So this framework, uh, I, I can say that it's, a, uh, it's complex not only because we are close to the lunch, but it's uh, uh, complex because legal levels uh, must be uh, stressed and step by step analyzed. OK, great. Uh, especially because the legal issues uh, uh, are not only about uh, institutional or jurisdictional aspects. There are problems uh, uh, linked to the certification, security, intellectual property rights, uh, uh, data protection rights. Uh, let me precise that uh, regarding data protection, I will go in depth with this issue is in the afternoon round table. So I will address, uh, there is only one slide in my, in my uh, in relation related to data protection. We are facing a rapidly growing market, a global one, and in the perspective, for example, of Horizon 2020, you uh, must think uh, of a plethora of uh, application, GNSS-based application, and so a plethora of legal issues may arise. I have uh, uh, summarized some of them by recalling the example of Engineer Lisi uh, about the train journey. Uh, I will skip s m several, uh, several slides because the, the panelists and the colleagues has already uh, presented. But as a lawyer, I need to build up, to set up a framework to which then successively refer the liability and the legal issues. The framework is threefold. One, definition of a global navigation satellite system. 
the current systems, GPS, GLONASS, regional one, but I will, I will uh, analyze in a legal perspective, not in a technical world also because I have seen slides, uh, wonderful slides uh, about it. And uh, third component of this legal framework, uh, the kind of GNSS-based application which uh, we may, we, we use uh, uh, nowadays and uh, or in the future we will use. If you think, uh, for example, of the, uh, about the Internet of Things, uh, when your washing machine shall uh, call you on the phone to start the washing program, or with your fridge talking with, uh, uh, with you, recalling you to purchase or, uh, or by reading the, the, the barcode on the element, Internet of Things. Internet of Things is the current scenario, and GNSS-based applications are relevant in providing Internet of Things application based. Okay. Uh, I need a, a commonly agreed definition of GNSS, a space-based positioning and navigation system designed to provide a worldwide, the global perspective, independently from weather condition, passive three-dimensional position, velocity, and timing data. This can be an accepted definition of uh, the infrastructure. I'm not an engineer. Uh, this infrastructure is very simply based on satellites uh, orbiting the Earth, control and monitoring station on the ground, receivers owned by users. Uh, let's uh, um, make some remark about these lights. In terms of jurisdiction, uh, we have to consider that services are multi-constellation services. The, uh, station, the, the, the station on the grounds are located in various countries and in various territories, who is the uh, uh, competent from a jurisdictional point of view. Uh, the second uh, category, the kind of satellite system. We all know there is GPS, there is, I, I don't know why the Russian flag is the, <laughs> the uni moving, but maybe for the war. Uh, the, Glo <laughs> the, the GLONASS one, EGNOS and Galileo, the European uh, compass uh, for China, but there are also regional uh, satellite system. Uh, it was very interesting, uh, a slide presented by engineer Lizzie about the word colored in various zones. That slide was, was a legal one because for each color there is a, a legal regime applicable. So, for example, why uh, the regional uh, satellite system are legally important? Because European Union enter into cooperation agreements to support in some regional uh, area of the world the providing of uh, the future, the soon to be Galileo services. So the international cooperation agreement with the regional public authorities or states may address and assess in a way the problem of the liability. We need agreements. I, I will conclude, I will, let me say who is the killer uh, in my relation. I will conclude by proposing an international agreement on civil liability because we are moving in a framework where there are no uh, um, proper rules and if we try to apply the existing international agreements for damages caused in the GNSS environment, for example, we may recall the transportation, airspace, uh, nuclear treaty uh, regulating damages for they fall out of the scope. There is no GNSS specific uh, uh, laws and regulation nowadays that uh, may assess the problem we are discussing. So we have also the regional system and uh, international cooperation agreement with the public authorities may be a, a way to assess also the liability problem. Uh, I will skip uh, the slides about uh, uh, Galileo and the services uh, provided by Galileo. It's important to remind that differences between the various satellite systems. Galileo, as uh, uh, is, uh, it has been already said, is a, a civil-oriented system, uh, almost exclusively, even if high precision signal may be used for military purposes, while GPS and GLONASS have uh, uh, born and uh, have been developed for military uh, uh, use and scopes. Uh, 
my colleagues before have discussed about uh, technical issues related to interoperability and compatibility, which are uh, legal uh, issues. Uh, and in fact, for example, since 2004, there is uh, an international agreement to make GPS and Galileo uh, interoperable, uh, and a possible uh, agreement with Russia for GLONASS wa was under discussion before the latest uh, events. China has signed on August 2014, after 11 years of negotiation and international agreement with Galileo, to support Galileo, to uh, cooperate with Galileo, is not a... Okay. Uh, these slides try to define, uh, uh, from a technical point of view, the interoperability and the compatibility. I will leave you to your attention to go in, in depth. Uh, there are uh, five uh, categories uh, of services. Why services are important? Because I must refer to services uh, when I shall uh, um, discuss about liability. So, which are the services? The services have been presented by the panelists, but can be recalled open access navigation. The open services uh, may uh, be considered in a rising liability, usually not, because there is no contract. The basic signal is not uh, even a service provision. But there is uh, a non-contractual liability that which may be recalled in case of damages uh, related to the provision of a basic signal. Commercial navigation uh, services and signal uh, augmented signals, which will be provided by Galileo, obviously will be provided uh, within a contractual relationship and also value-added services. So the commercial perspective, where there is a service provider uh, which apply a fee uh, uh, under a contract, uh, when there is a contract, there is also a contractual liability which may be regulated within the relationship. Uh, quick, quickly moving, moving on, uh, the services, because we are talking about satellite space, but in the practical life, uh, which can be a, a GNSS-based service which uh, use, uh, you may use during the day life. The three categories of service interlinked, obviously, are navigation, positioning, and timing. We know as uh, uh, common users of that such services, uh, the navigation one, so uh, the services and the, 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 the signals uh, grounding the services uh, are used to navigate and measure speed and determine location worldwide in the maritime, marine, space, road, rail, aviation, and so on. The positioning is related to, uh, as the words say, to also mapping applied in fishing industry, agriculture, and whatever. I shall skip because uh, it has been presented in the previous uh, lectures. Uh, timing is a very uh, important sector in the providing of services. Uh, timing means uh, synchronization. Uh, and uh, it is uh, used, such category of service uh, is used in several fields. For example, I don't know if you have the token with the password, OTP, one-time password generated each uh, uh, every 30 seconds. This is based on synchronization which may be provided by the atomic clocks inside the satellites. Uh, let's say that uh, uh, in, um, in a day all the financial transactions carried out all over the world must be synchronized by the, the banks on the financial institution and the synchronization is based on time services, uh, GNSS based and so on. Telecommunication, synchronization between uh, uh, radio station on the ground. Even when you tune your radio programs, uh, you are using uh, timing services, uh, which may be GNSS based. Encryption, and so on. Okay. Let's come after this preliminary uh, presentation to the legal issues uh, uh, I have promised to, in a way, uh, assess. We may start from the concept of liability. We may agree on a commonly agreed at international level meaning, uh, juridical and technical meaning of liability. But then again, uh, the framework uh, can become complex because this concept may be interpreted, may be applied in a different way in different jurisdictions. 
So liability may be defined as a condition of being responsible for a possible or actual loss, penalty, heavy, expense or burden, and as the state of being bound or obliged in law or contract or justice to do, pay or make something. This is a very general juridical definition. In the context of Galileo, there is an interesting uh, uh, document uh, uh, drafted uh, more than 10 years ago, conclusions and recommendations, uh, um, and the legal paragraph uh, are really interesting. But uh, as far as I know, uh, because I do not live with satellite every day or with GNSS uh, every day, as far as I know, is the unique, the sole legal document uh, besides another document in 2010, the Unit Roi Convention uh, assessing the civil liability for GNSS uh, satellite services. As far as I know, these are the sole documents uh, specifically uh, focusing on uh, uh, civil liability and other legal issues. And let me uh, repeat again that, uh, in my opinion, the legal perspective is not uh, taken enough into consideration by public authorities, by... Uh, uh, th th there are the engineering, there are the security, th there are indirect uh, consequences of uh, uh, these issues, but uh, facing directly and I mean, in my opinion, maybe an international agreement could face uh, directly the series of uh, legal uh, uh, issues uh, arising from this uh, presentation for, for, for uh, the time being. Uh, there is no, uh, there is no uh, enough consideration of these issues. Sorry. So in these uh, uh, documents, conclusion and recommendation, there is a, a definition of uh, liability, the accountability of a person or a legal entity to compensate damage caused to another person or to another legal entity in accordance with specified legal principles and rules. And this obligation may be prescribed in an agreement or in a legal norm. Moving on, what could be the sources of legal liability. Let's uh, leave apart the intervention of uh, fraudulent third parties. Let's concentrate, uh, I cannot be comprehensive, but let's concentrate on a threefold. Fault or negligence of the provider of the signal, defect of one of the GNSS component parts, and force major. There is no doubt that uh, in case of a failure or malfunctioning uh, due to uh, negligence or uh, even fault of the GNSS provider, uh, there is a liability that may be, let's, say, let's see if enforced or, or not. Force majeure, uh, even if you, uh, mostly of you are not lawyers, so force majeure it's uh, uh, ordinarily a, a cause of exoneration from liability, but it's not so certain, because let's say that there is a, a sandstorm uh, with radiation uh, interfering with the signals, so this is a force majeure. But in several jurisdictions, it depends on the predictability of the heavens. If the heavens, even going beyond a reasonable, can be predicted, in some jurisdiction, uh, you may be held liable, even in case of force majeure. And this, is may, and this may be a source of controversy. Defect of GNS as component parts. There are two kinds of grounds. The first one, someone, but uh, it's a very, uh, it, it's almost rejected as a position, consider liable the provider of the signal because they consider providing of the signal as a product, so they recall the product liability. This position cannot be accepted, but another, uh, uh, the second ground is the product liability when the manufacturer, manufacturer delivers a defective part of the satellite of the ground station of the receiver. Who is liable in case of failure or malfunctioning of uh, the service provision of the signal? Uh, let's say that uh, uh, lacking uh, uh, an international agreed uh, specific uh, legal framework, uh, both the manufacturer and uh, the provider of the signal may be held liable, but uh, 
mm, the provider of the signal may recall for its uh, exoneration and has a right to records uh, against the uh, manufacturer in case of defective components to have the compensation reimbursed by the manufacturer. But it is a, a possible uh, situation because uh, often the manufacturer may coincide with the, with the uh, service provider. And so in this case, uh, if uh, the product liability may be recalled, uh, some international existing uh, uh, instrument like the uh, Ag Convention on the Product Liability may be recalled and may be enforced. But then, for example, this convention has only 11 contracted states. Uh, one may ask, uh, there is a legal vacuum at all? No, there are rules, there are principles. But the problem in, uh, I have entitled the, this series of slides, criticalities to enforce legal liabilities. There, there is not a legal vacuum, but there is uh, the main criticality represented by the lack of a GNSS specific uh, law uh, and uh, principles. So we have to uh, set up a legal, uh, a legal paradigm. The legal paradigm is based on contractual liability, non-contractual liability, and product liability. Uh, in these slides, you may find a possible definition of this legal paradigm to be applied in order to try to assess the issues of legal liability in providing uh, GNSS signals and services uh, thereof. Contractual liability is the liability regulated by an agreement uh, uh, between two or more parties, and there is uh, the possibility to regulate damages occurred within a non-correct performance of uh, the agreement. And uh, this is the ground where the minors of problems may arise. The non-contractual or tort liability is the law principle related to the uh, damages occurred outside a contractual relationship. And the product liability is the liability uh, which may be imputed to the seller or to the manufacturer of the uh, hardware parts of a GNSS system. Uh, if we have on one hand a legal uh, paradigm to be used in order to assess these problems. On the other hand, we have to uh, clarify who the key actors are, who the possible liable subjects are, and uh, there is a legal functional model built to this scope. Uh, and which kind of uh, uh, services uh, or signals are provided by these key actors. On one hand, we have the legal paradigm, contractual, non-contractual, product liability. On the other hand, we have to apply this legal paradigm to the key actors and the various providers and to the object of their uh, provision. So there is the provision of the basic signal, basic or primary signal provision, and from a legal point of view, this is not considered even a service provision. There are the provision of augmented signals, and there are value-added service provisions. So there is this threefold. Who are the key actors which may be held liable or at least involved in, in a legal action? There are basic signal service providers, augmentation signal services provider, value-added services provider, end user. The end user is, for example, the uh, aircraft company or the railway company in the example we made uh, some minutes ago, and the final users uh, holding a receiver. Uh, let's go, uh, let's move on. Generally, the basic signal uh, do not raise any contractual liability because uh, the provision of the open services and the provision of uh, uh, the basic signal um, are made for free. There is no fee, there is no contract. Uh, everyone holding a receiver may use for free and uh, the service provider cannot monitor the use, cannot uh, have any kind of control. But it is discussed because uh, even if the public authorities deny a contractual liability for the providing of uh, uh, basic signals or uh, for uh, open services, someone has pointed out that, for example, uh, 
is, it is true that there is no contract, but there is, the, in the legal paradigm, the possibility to uh, ground an action basing on tort or, or non-contractual liability. Why? Because even when providing basic signals, the authorities, the governments, the holders of the infrastructures may declaration or uh, uh, release authorization on even the provision of basic signal on, may, uh, on which the, 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 the end user may rely. And another more technical legal uh, con uh, remark is that uh, the compensation for damages at uh, an international level is based on the concept of harm, of harm occurred, and not uh, on the concept of fault. Because the governments may say, we, are, we have no fault because we provide open uh, services and uh, basic signal for free. There is no fault to may uh, recall or, or which may ground legal action. But the, uh, liability is based on the harm, is based on the damage occurred. And so, uh, in the other, moving, uh, moving on, in the uh, other uh, voices of uh, the legal paradigm, uh, contractual liability, uh, sorry, in, in, in the provision of augmentation services, in, in the provision of uh, value added services, there is uh, less uh, uh, minor problem because here there are contracts because the augmentation serve signal is provided within a contractual relationship, there is a fee to be paid, and uh, also the value-added services based on the augmented signal are regulated by a contract. So within a contractual relationship, we may assess also the liability uh, issues. Uh, okay. Uh, in these slides, I want to recall uh, the fact that uh, how to prevent liability, how to uh, uh, handle these issues by technically strengthening the uh, continuity of the signals, uh, accuracy, efficiency, availability, and reliability. It's just a slide recalling that if we act uh, before uh, by uh, setting up uh, uh, modern, uh, modern infrastructure, maybe the possibility of, uh, of uh, legal liability um, uh, arising it's, uh, can be handled in a way. Uh, Another problem is that if we may agree on the concept of liability, but there are criticalities in enforcing and uh, all uh, the issues I have tried to summarize in, uh, in, uh, in these minutes, there is another prob problem. Which damage can be compensated or reimbursed? Because if we are uh, within a contractual relationship, uh, uh, there is no problem. Uh, there is the direct damage to, to be compensated. But uh, what about... Uh, indirect damages. What about uh, jurisdiction where uh, some particular kind of damages exist, like the punitive damages in the United States, uh, which is a category of damages uh, which is uh, prohibited in Europe from compensating? So if we face with a global uh, market uh, providing uh, a global uh, set of services, uh, and if, if we have the uh, difficulties in uh, uh, imputing in a particular jurisdiction, in grounding in a particular jurisdiction uh, a legal action, then we, we shall have difficulties in handling with the legal uh, concept, because in that jurisdiction some damages uh, are applied in a certain way and may be recognized or not. There is another uh, legal issue related to the third party liabilities because uh, when we discuss about contractual liability, the counterparts are, for example, the holder of the infrastructure, the, 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 the service provider, which may be a public authorities, and for example, the railway company, which is the end user using the senior. What, what about the liability towards the individuals, the single consumers? Let's think again uh, to the example of uh, passengers of a train uh, uh, wounded in a, in a, in a crash. Uh, may, uh, who is liable? May th th these individuals uh, sue who? This is another problem. Are the public authorities liable? The public authorities shall deny liability. So uh, a single uh, uh, final consumer uh, may sue, uh, besides the railway company, also the provider of the signal when the provider is a public authority? and other issues. Uh, let's say that uh, limiting to Galileo, there is uh, an important uh, 
uh, article of the European Union Treaty, the Article 288, uh, which is the general uh, law principle regulating the liability of the European Union and its officers. Uh, the contractual liability of the, le let's read this article and, and I will comment. The contractual liability of the community shall be governed by the law applicable to the contract in question. And so, you know, in, the, in an agreement uh, you may choose uh, the applicable law. But in the case of non-contractual liability, the community shall, in accordance with general principles common to the laws of the member states, may good any damages caused by its institution or by its servants in the performance of their duties. The non-contractual liability according to this treaty article uh, 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 recalls other criticalities because uh, what does it mean in accordance with the general principles common to the laws of all the 28 member states? I don't know. Uh, there is this regulation uh, dated December 2013, which is uh, highly uh, interesting. Uh, uh, it's the regulation about implementation and exploitation of the European satellite navigation systems. It's a recent one. But there are some parts, even if uh, the, the legal issues we are discussing are not faced at all, but there are some parts really interesting. For example, the premises number 22 say, it is important to note that the investment and the operating costs of the systems are estimated for the period 2014-2020, do not take into account of, of unforeseen financial obligation which the Union may be obliged to assume. In particular, it, there are not taken into account those, the costs relating to liability arising from the performance of the services or from the fact that the Union is the owner of the infrastructure, especially with regard to any malfunctioning of the system those obligations are the subject of a specific analysis of the Commission. When? Article 6 of this regulation specifically provides the ownership and say, okay, the European Union is the owner of the Galileo, Egnos and uh, other uh, satellite infrastructure. So as a lawyer, I may say, you are the owner, you are the liable. No, it's not so clear because, for example, in managing the related intellectual property rights related to the satellite system, the European Union may um, enter into license agreements uh, and so again, there is a step in the various level contractual relationship where the matter of liability may be regulated. How? Is the licensee holding uh, liable? Maybe it, th this could be a way. But the general principle stated in Article 6, uh, the European Union is the owner of the infrastructure, may lead, in my opinion, of, uh, to a certain liability, uh, may entitle the liability of this public authority. Uh, other legal issues related to data protection. We say, uh, we, we, we shall go in depth in the afternoon, but uh, data protection is a major issue in providing GNSS services. And we know that, especially now in Europe, uh, a new regulation on data protection uh, is under discussion, uh, a general uh, uh, new framework, because uh, the data protection uh, directive is dated uh, 1995, and this regulation is actually under discussion, approved by the last uh, European Parliament. But the regulation uh, of December 2013 related to the implementation of satellite systems say, regarding uh, data, issue, data protection issues, regarding data protection issues, uh, you have to simply apply the data protection directive and the uh, um, regulation related to data processing by institutional European authorities. Uh, regarding liability under the data protection legal framework, uh, there are possible uh, non-contractual liability. There is a particular category of damages, the damages following data processing. Who is the liable subject is the data processor. Who is the data processor? Maybe the provider of the signal, but maybe also the owner 
this is the uh, this is why I have uh, discussed these two slides about EPR and data protection together, because according to the data protection law, for example, to the European laws, the data processor is not only maybe not only the signal provider, even a licensee uh, of the European Union, but maybe also and usually is also the owner of the infrastructure. Uh, processing the data. So, according to data, pro data processing, we may recall a, a possible liability of the European Union like owner of the infrastructure. And uh, uh, the conclusion is, uh, in my perspective, that of uh, drafting and agreeing uh, on an international agreement about, uh, about uh, civil liability in providing GNSS services. Why? Because uh, we have already uh, pointed out that the existing international regimes, legal regimes, meaning international treaties uh, regulating liability in uh, specific sectors like air, space, and nuclear, are not uh, fully uh, useful in assessing the legal liability. Uh, the lack of a specific GNSS uh, legal framework uh, regulating also the liability impact, for example, on the insurability of the services. There is a problem of insurability, which may be assessed by an international agreement, clarify the various uh, uh, liability. And this is the slide uh, related to uh, why an international instrument may be useful, because uh, it may regulate the fraudulent intervention of third person, force majeure, uh, qualification of GNS as signal as a service, liability for product uh, uh, for failure or malfunctioning, and um, uh, a unique, a sole regime may uh, handle, for example, the problem of the open services. Our product, our services, contract liability are not applicable, but tort and no contractual liability may be recalled, and so on. Uh, the final user may rely on a uniform uh, set of rules and uh, legal principles whichever the signal provider is, whichever is the field, whichever is the service. And this is the slides. And so, uh, finally, an international uh, treaty, an international agreement on civil liability in providing GNSS service uh, may also uh, be based on the cooperation not only of states or uh, um, supranational authorities like the European Union, but also other international organizations, just because we are facing with the global market and with the global services, may be involved in setting up uh, this uh, global uh, set of rules and law principles which may regulate and assess the legal issues I have tried to summarize and to discuss in my presentation. And so thank you for the attention and I'm available for any kind of question. Thank you very much, Alessandro Dannin. I think Marco Lisi wants to... You're the only one making a question now because after we have Lunchtime. And have mercy of the poor lawyer. No, 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 but it's more than a question, it's a clarification. Yeah. I w should congratulate with you because I found it very interesting with a lot of uh, stimuli. And I'm not going here to answer some of your uh, open standing uh, <laughs> questions. Nobody can at the moment. But Absolutely. Just, uh, let me say, uh, yeah. let me say two words about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, just a clarification about the completely different perspective. Again, without giving any solution, eh, there is no answer at the moment between GPS and and Galileo. GPS is strange. It started as a military system. Yeah. Now there is a, a huge involvement of, of the government on civilian applications. So much so that there is a board a government board that puts together several departments, not only the, the Department of Defense, taking care of the application of Galileo at large. Uh, sorry, of uh, GPS at large. So there is an involvement. So also, on top of that, there is also a service declaration document that if you go to the gps.gov site, you can read what is the commitment at government level vis-a-vis -vis the users and service providers, again, at large. But uh, uh, notwithstanding uh, this type of involvement that you would uh, see as uh, a, a impl impl implicating also a commitment on the liability side, 
they have solved the problem at government level of liability with a disclaimer. Yeah, reject. Uh, this is important because someone could not have realized ah. that whenever you buy something, something based on GPS, maybe written in the famous small characters, the there is a disclaimer that the US government is not liable for any type of application that deriving from the use of GPS and of this device. It's one of my okay? skipped slides. Okay, no, but this, was <laughs> this is important. Now, in, uh, in Europe, we are starting. Even if, sorry, even if a tort liability is under discussion, the, the government yeah, of the United so States... Far, I'm, ex, not, uh, uh, I'm not uh, aware of any No, of no, any no, but, but, but you have to ground yeah. the legal action in the United States. This is the pre-requirement. Pre okay, so, uh, which is a limitation. Yeah. Now, in Absolutely. Europe, we are starting, but uh, and we are probably going to the same path. There is a fundamental difference, though, that while the US government could say this system was paid for something else as objective. It, it start, was, uh, was for funded military. for military applications. So the fact that civil people use it is a byproduct. So take advantage of it, but do not ask me for any commitment. In the case of Galileo, it's just the opposite. In, in the case of Galileo, it is stated down that we are doing it for the user, for the European citizens first, and in general for whoever can use it in the world. So this is the problem with, uh, it is not solved. Eh? The problem is that uh, it's like, the, the, the comparison is like a, a bench in a garden, in a public garden. You sit to the bench, the bench breaks down and you uh, break your leg, okay? Can, is the administration, the local administration suitable? Yes. The answer is because that was for the, for the sake and for the uh, benefit of the, of the citizens. So if instead of a, a benefit was causing a damage, it's obvious that you should be liable. The same should apply with the same principle to Galileo. If Galileo was done as a service for the European citizens and something goes wrong, and instead of being beneficial, it is harming mm -hmm. the European citizens, then the European citizens, someone says, should have the right, and so there is no possibility of a disclaimer in the case. So it is open, there is no answer to that, but you under, just to explain the big difference, the big difference here, if you trace back from the origin Galileo, in terms of money, in terms of political objectives, everything is stating that is done for the community, for the European community, the community of European citizens. So there is no way to deny that uh, the original purpose was for the benefit of the community and not for other, for other purposes. This makes uh, the picture <laughs> very complex and completely open and so far. Uh, you know that also on other grounds, uh, the relation between uh, uh, infrastructure, European uh, infrastructure and US infrastructure uh, is critical. For example, in data protection, uh, we as Europe face with a very regulated uh, uh, framework, uh, while in the United States uh, uh, there is no federal uh, laws on privacy, and so when data are transferred from Europe to the United States, we have uh, uh, similar, uh, uh, similar difficulties like the ones you, are, uh, you were pointing out. Uh, for sure, the United States provides GPS for military scope, and so in the military sector there are high precision signals. If you want to use GPS to, uh, see for civil uh, purposes, you do at your own risk, and, and the, the signal is not high precision one, while Galileo, uh, in providing commercial services uh, on a civilian ground, shall provide especially Yes, there is, there is contract. So I know, but I have no answer. I have uh, preliminary confessed the killer of my lectures and that uh, I only m could propose a possible solution. In my opinion, in a global world, uh, an international instrument could assess also these kinds of uh, on one hand. On the other hand, let's say if the United States government's authorities, let's sit on the table, it's, uh, or the Russian one, it's really, I, I, I don't hide the, the difficulties in, in, in creating such, uh, such environment.